But the oscillation of bowel sounds, evidence-based practices finding, has nothing to do with flatus, it has nothing to do with bowel movement, or even the tolerance of a diet after major abdominal surgery. Hello everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified diabetes educator, and owner of KimRoseDietitian.com. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, there's some videos below that I do want you to take a look at. Over a hundred videos below. So feel free to look around, familiarize yourself with my channel, with my videos, with my content, and remember to comment, like, and subscribe. For my returning subscribers, Welcome. So today we're going to be speaking about EROS. EROS, enhanced recovery after surgery. So for today's objectives, we're going to speak about the history of gastrointestinal surgery, specifically dealing with the diet. Then we're going to speak about the rationale for early feeding. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about EROS and the benefits that it has. So let's just delve right into the history. So typically from the studies that I have looked at, um, they mostly deal with colorectal surgery, specifically dealing with EROS. But if an individual comes into the hospital for any type of abdominal surgery they're made NPO at midnight or even prior to midnight so these patients are NPO anywhere between 6 to 12 hours which is an extended period of time prior to surgery after surgery now the patient remains NPO and some clinicians like to use bowel sounds the oscillation of bowel sounds as an indicator if feedings should or should not be started so when feedings are started individuals move from a clear liquid to a full liquid, to a GI soft, and even a regular diet. So this is something common that I see in my facility and in other facilities from speaking with other dietitians. But as we're going to see, EROS is moving away from that. So something that I did want to say about the oscillation of bowel sounds. I know clinicians like to use it as an indicator of the resolution of a post-operative ileus, but the oscillation of bowel sounds, evidence-based practices finding, has nothing to do with flatus, it has nothing to do with bowel movement, or even the tolerance of a diet after major abdominal surgery. So let's look at the evidence for early feeding. So after surgery, the small bowel function returns to normal a few hours after surgery. And don't quote me on this, I was actually reading about this last night and something else that I was looking at. It's about two to four hours after surgery. So the function of the small bowel has a lot to do with many different factors such as the enteric nervous system. It has a lot to do with hormones, drugs, the severity of the surgery, things of that nature. So when you feed a client early, a few hours and not a few days after surgery, there's some benefits. These benefits include reducing the risk of a post-operative ileus from forming, it stimulates motility of the ileus, and not to mention other factors such as reducing malnutrition, which is big in hospitals at this time, reduces cost, length of stay, nosocomial infections, and I, the list can go on and on and on. So now let's move on to EROS and how it supports early diet advancement. So EROS, as stated before, stands for enhanced recovery after surgery. And it doesn't specifically just deal with a nutritional aspect, it is a multidisciplinary team effort. So other disciplines such as anesthesiology, surgeons, um, nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, we all have a role to play in making sure that EROS is implemented for the benefit of the patient. And of course, on the hospital level as well. So there's numerous components that have been shown to improve patient outcomes after major abdominal or even colorectal surgery. So I just want to review some of them for you, um, some of the components of EROS. So this is not an all-inclusive list. This is just some of them specifically dealing with food and nutrition. So number one is shorter time NPO for surgery. So that order that comes in NPO after midnight or even the order that comes in NPO prior to midnight, uh, EROS is moving away from this. One of the second components is oral carbohydrate loading at least two hours prior to surgery. And one of the rationales for this is because it causes insulin secretion, which will decrease hyperglycemia 
post-surgery. The next one is avoidance of NG tubes, which I know dietitians, we do not order the insertion of NG tubes to decompress the stomach. That has an effect on the enteric nervous system, but EROS is definitely moving away from this. And then the fourth one is early ambulation, just to get things moving, to get things flowing, to impact the whole entire GI tract. So ERAS has four protocols. There is a pre-admission protocol, a pre-operative protocol, an intraoperative protocol, and a post-operative protocol. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into the details of each of the protocols, but I do have a link in my description box below that I want you to take a look at to find out the specifics of each protocol and to look how it is a multidisciplinary effort and how dietitians can be a vital role in this multidisciplinary team. So all in all, the traditional path of making a patient NPO at midnight or even prior to midnight for surgery the next day is not really um, evidence-based. Science is ever evolving. So definitely EROS is an important component of that for improved patient outcomes. So guys, that is it. That is my little discourse on EROS. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. But for a more exhaustive application of EROS and how it can help improve patient outcomes, look at that link that I have in my description box. Thank you guys for watching and also remember to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Have a good day. Bye.